Hey, hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tyra and thank you for joining me. As you can tell by today's title, we're going to be talking about all of the palettes that I brought into my collection this year. So I counted just a few moments ago and I think it's at 17, I think, but I'm not actually sure. Let me check. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh my God, I was right. So I brought in 17 palettes this year, and these are the ones that are still in my collection. This doesn't count the ones that I tried and returned to Sephora, for example, or passed along. So let me start with the palettes that I have physically here in front of me. I have them all in this Sephora bag, and then I'll pop up some photos of the ones that I don't presently have physically in this room with me. So let's start with the one that is in my hand. This is from Laura Geller. This is an eye and face palette. Yeah, eye and cheek, that's what I'm trying to say. This is the Laura Geller Best of the Best Tuscan Dreams palette. So this comes with six eyeshadows, a bronzer, a highlighter, and a blush. So I only got this in October and I've used it twice, I think. This highlighter is not great for me, but everything else I can use. And I do really like this palette. To me, this is a great all-in-one palette. I do wish it wasn't as chunky as it is, because um, you can see there's lots of wasted space as well. So I wish it was a little bit more compact, but I think it's really nice. You have nice shadows here. They probably only needed three of the six because they do look kind of similar. I'm not going to lie to you, but if you like the look of this, I think this is a great palette. It has a great quality, and I definitely think for Laura Geller's target audience, this is a great option. Also from Laura Geller, I picked up the collab that they did with Wheel of Fortune. So this is the prize winning palette, I think it's called. This is what it looks like here. So this is normal pressed shades, whereas the first one I showed you were baked shadows. So this is what the color story looks like. It's giving ABH and Mario palette from years gone by. It is really nice. Is this my favorite palette that I've ever tried and used? No, but am I happy to have it? Meh. I'm not so sure how long this palette is going to stay around in my collection. Like, I definitely want to get more use out of it. And you can see that I have used it. I've used this maybe five times, I want to say. But I just feel like this won't be a palette that I prioritize reaching for. Nothing wrong with the palette or the quality or anything like that. It's just this over other things in my collection. I'm not so sure this will be the first thing that comes to mind or like the first thing I want to reach for. This might be a okay, well, I, I, I haven't used it in a while. I should probably use it kind of palette. So this might be on the chopping block. All right, let's hop over to Natasha Denona. This was the first palette that I got this year. This is the Natasha Denona My Dream palette. I should say last year. I purchased this palette in the spring 2023 VIB sale. Oh, I'm missing two shades. Those are in my custom palette. Um, so I got this palette. I did wait a while to pick this up, which I'm really glad I did. Is this my favorite Natasha Denona palette? No, I don't think it is. The shimmers in here are just kind of lackluster in a way that I was not expecting. So they're really hard to build up. I love the mattes. The Natasha Denona mattes are like my favorite mattes to ever exist, but I just wish the shimmers were better. What I need to do, and I might do this week finally, is to label the back of these shades so I can finally pop them out and use them with other um, Natasha Denona palettes because I really want to mix some things around. But I love the mattes in here, but if you were looking at the shimmers and expecting them to be fantastic, they aren't. And I'm kind of half tempted to scrape them out and push other shimmers in there. But unless I have this palette, again, this is kind of in the same as Laura Geller where it's like, Ooh, I haven't used this in a while. I should probably use it. Like, I don't think I've used this palette since, like, June. So, yikes. Okay, and with Natasha Denona, I picked this up from Sephora. This was on sale for, like, $18 or so. Um, This is the Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette. This did not pique my interest at all when it first came out, but then I saw it again this year, and I was like, oh, 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 she's really cute. And then for $18, I thought that's a great steal because these are, I think these mini palettes in Canada are now like $36, which is insane to me. And on top of the fact that Natasha Denona is no longer being stocked at Sephora Canada, I thought if I want it, this is the best chance and the best price I'm probably going to find it. I've used this two or three times, I want to say, and I do really like it. It's, it's nice. I like it. It's mini. It's cute. It's easy. I really enjoy having that palette. 
let's see what else I have in here. So this palette I picked up during the Sephora fall VIB sale. This is the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette. I saw this the first year that it came out in 2022 and I thought it was really pretty but for the price it wasn't something I needed but then I became more of a neutral girly this year I say as I'm wearing chartreuse green on my eyes but I did become more of a neutral girly this year and people were still talking about this palette a year later so I thought I'm gonna pick it up and I'm really glad I did I do really enjoy using this and I feel like I would have had FOMO, like really, really, really bad FOMO if I didn't get this palette. So I'm happy I added it to my collection. I think it's not necessarily something that you need, but it is a nice to have item if it's in your budget. All right, let's talk about a few palettes that I haven't used yet. I made a Pat McGrath order that I definitely shouldn't have ordered. So in this order, I got this eyeshadow palette from the holidays. This is the sunset romance palette object oh the protector's coming off a little bit objectively very very beautiful but my problem with this is it looks exactly like the what's it called i never remember the name of it voyeuristic vixen quad that i have it's literally the only thing that's different is this is an additional light transition shade so I'm still debating if I want to use this or if I just want to pass it on brand new. So I haven't dipped into it. I've only had this for like five days, I want to say, at the time of filming. Haven't used it. Not sure what I'm going to do with it. I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't know. And in that same breath, in that same order, I got this behemoth. No one told me this palette was this big. This is too large it's actually annoying how big this palette is so this is one of the holiday cheek and eye palettes this is starstruck splendor the one with the greens again haven't used it because i'm probably not going to keep this because i didn't realize it was this big if this was smaller i would keep it but based on the size i can't do it i can't do it like the shadows look fantastic these two greens here and this like oh crystallized purple that kind of looks like nabla alchemy stunning but this thing is massive like i don't know like i'll show you compared to the makeup by mario which this is a nice compact palette i'll show you next to a standard natasha denona like it's too it's too damn big so i can't keep this it's going to annoy me so I should have paid more attention to the photos people were posting, but I don't feel like I saw anyone do a size comparison of that palette. So I feel bamboozled and led astray. So I have that, but I haven't used it. So those are two palettes that I haven't used that I'm probably going to get rid of before I even use them. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Another thing that I haven't used is from ColourPop. This is the Going Coconuts palette. Again, I was debating if I wanted to dip into this or just pass it off brand new. I picked this up during their um, Black Friday sale. I think I paid like maybe $12 for it. And it is really pretty. And I've heard this is like the best ColourPop palette. And because I'm in my neutral era, I kind of want to try it. But I'm also like, I have so many neutral shadows. I don't need to try this specific one. But I feel like this is going to be another FOMO. Like I I will always wonder about it you know what i mean so i might try it once but then i'm also looking at it and it's like mm, do i need to like let me compare this to the makeup by mario real quick let me show you a comparison I can find most shades of the Going Coconuts in this one here by Mario. But this one I still want to try because everyone loves it. But realistically, two of these lid shades I would probably never use. I would really... Let me put that down. I like this shimmer the most, the chocolatey brown. This one I could probably get away with and this one I would never use on my lid. That would solely be a highlighting shade. So then it's like, why do I need that many honestly if it was just this trio at the bottom that would be fantastic so 
I think I'm gonna have to pass this on as well. But if you have any recommendations for a nice chocolatey single shadow, let me know because that actually looks really, really nice. But is it worth keeping a whole palette for one shade? Probably not. Ooh, I'm undecided. Let me know what you think. I think in my mind, I know it's best to just pass it on. But in my soul, I'm like, just try it. Someone won't be mad if you've used it once before they get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I've already dinged one of the shades in it accidentally with my nail. So it's like, might as well use it. <laughs> Guys, help. Okay, another palette that I haven't used yet. I just recently got this. I've had this for about a week. And this is the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 1 palette. So I did previously own this palette and then I sold it. And as soon as I sold it, I was like, why would I do that? No, 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 no. This is her. This is she. She's stunning. I love the shades in this palette. And you wouldn't think I would, but I love them. They're so stunning. Do you see that duochrome doing its thing? Oh, stop it. So clearly you can tell this is kind of my vibe recently, like neutrals, soft, ethereal looking shades. I feel like this is ethereal eyes before ethereal eyes was ethereal eyes. You know what I mean? So this is so, so, so stunning. And look, at I have another nice chocolate brown. This one probably won't be as metallic. It's probably going to pull more of a satin. So I'm still on the hunt for a good chocolate brown shadow, but I'm not going to buy any because I'm on a no buy, but I just want to know about them. So. This is probably the most exciting new palette that I have in my collection from this year. This along with um, Ethereal Eyes. So I'm so, so, so happy to have Divine Rose back in my collection. Okay, I only have three more things to talk about before we jump over to the palettes that I don't physically have with me. So I stuck this, oh geez. I snuck this one in here, even though it's not technically a palette, but these are the new singles that I have acquired. So I got six shadows from Cleona and five singles from Odin's Eye. I also did place an order from Shine by SD um, for some of their collab shades, the collab with Glam Smitty and oh my gosh, why do I always forget her name? The Earthborn Collection. Jesus, what is their name? Seeking Shifts, Riley, I got there. So those are also on their way to me, but those were pre-order. Not sure when they're gonna show up, but these are the singles that I've recently acquired. Like I said, six from Cleona and five from Odin's Eye. I haven't used any of these yet, but I do have other Cleona shades in my collection, but I didn't have any Odin's Eye. And I hadn't had tried Odin's Eye for about three years. So brought these guys in. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say something, but it wasn't relevant. So the last two things in my bag are also from Odin's Eye. So these were the palettes that they released in the summertime, and I loved the look of them, but Odin's Eye was doing some things that I didn't necessarily want to fund. But then I, over their, la their last few collections, I've gotten better in regards of things I'm looking out for. So I picked these up during their Black Friday sale. I think these were... 30% off and I could use a code as well. So like I said, this was their summer release. The first palette is the Jewels and Gems palette. It's such a unique color story. So I haven't used this one yet either because you can tell that the plastic is still on it, but it's so beautiful. And then the one that really, really, really appeals to me is the Stone and Rock palette. Um, but this, you know, I'm a green girl at heart. Greens and neutral soft looks, it's my happy place. So this is absolutely stunning. And I've heard from a lot of people that this is their favorite green palette at this point in time. So I really wanted to give it a try and it, like, it has different depths and tones and textures. So I'm really excited about these, but I've been thinking about this as soon as these launched. I feel like they misnamed these because why is the green one called stone and rock and then the gray neutral one called jewels and gems like this one would make much more sense if it was called stone and rock and this is jewels and gems because like emeralds and then like stones are gray 
I can't be the only one who's thought that, but that has literally bothered me since I saw these released. <laughs> Okay, and then I have a written list here of the palettes that I don't presently have in front of me, so I'll pop up a photo of them. The first one is the Charlotte Tilbury Quad. It is the palette of Pops in the shade Pillow Talk. So this just has four pink-leaning um, metallic shadows. I picked this up from Winners when I was in Quebec this summer, and this palette is so cute. I love this quad. I think if I ever go traveling, which I probably won't anytime soon, this likely will be the only eyeshadow I take with me because it has soft looks. You can smoke something out with a dark brown. I just feel like it's really, really pretty. So I enjoy having this in my collection. The next one is the Lorac Noir palette. I got this from Shoppers because if you didn't know in Canada, you can get Lorac on shoppersbeauty.com or the Shoppers website. I'm not sure if they're in store anywhere, but you can definitely get them online. Um, this palette is gorgeous. A thing about me is I love a shimmer more than I love a matte because if I need a matte, girly pop, I've got a matte. My favorite palette that I have is my Natasha Denona All Matte Palette. So I definitely love a shimmer heavy palette. So the fact that only the top row is mattes in this palette really spoke to me. And the shimmers are so nice. They all have like a little bit of different texture. Some are more sparkly, some are more satin, but like you can mix them all so well together and they're so beautiful. Love this palette, really happy to have it. The next one was actually a free palette. This was a gift with purchase on my e.l.f. cosmetics order. This is the e.l.f. Rose Gold Nude Palette. And you're probably thinking, it looks very nondescript, it just looks basic. Like if you're in a pinch, a great drugstore palette. This palette is so nice. I've used this maybe like three or four times since I got it and I only got it like early December. It's so cute. I filmed a look with it um, as like a first impressions. Stunning. Love it. I'll leave that up here or up here if I remember. Um, but I thoroughly enjoy having this palette and I'm glad I got it as a free gift because it looks like something that I would like and purchase, but I don't know if I would actually spend my own money on it. So the fact that it was a free gift was like literally perfect for me. So I again love having this one in my collection. And then the last two palettes are from Laura Geller. These are her holiday eyeshadow palettes. These are the baked ones. There's one called Pink Prosecco and like Champagne Toast, I think. So I got these for the purpose of work appropriate makeup, if you will, because they're softer and they're baked. And I just felt like it was a nice, going to be a nice one and done kind of palette situation. And not to mention, I paid probably $12 each for them. So I haven't used these palettes very often. I've used them both twice, I want to say, and I do like them. They do achieve the purpose that I got them for. Did I necessarily need them? No, but I wasn't going to pass them up for like $12. So they're my collection. How long are they going to stay in my collection? I'm not really sure, but I'm glad that I have them at this very moment. So those are the 17, I guess 16 and a half because the singles palettes that I've brought. Oh, oh my God, I lied. I almost forgot one. Oh my God, because I didn't write it on my list. 18 palettes. Let me write this down. Oh my gosh, how could I forget? The 18th palette is the Shall We Makeup Mist Witch palette. So I just got this on their Boxing Day pre-order. I got the mini version and it's like, I want to say 30 Canadian dollars, maybe. It was $25 USD. So whatever that converts to in Canadian. This palette is so pretty. It's so, so, so stunning. And when it first dropped, I was like, oh yeah, that's really pretty. And I remember my friends and I in the community were talking about it, but I thought, you know what? I don't need it. But then I got it because it was on sale and I thought, why not? It is really beautiful. So that is also on its way to me. So that is the 18th palette that I brought in. I don't feel like that's a lot of palettes. 18 palettes in 12 months is not so bad. It's but that I'm thinking about most of these palettes came into my collection from October onwards. So I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 15 of these, 15 out of the 18 palettes I got from October onwards. So during the beginning of the year, 
or for the better part of the year I was doing really well with not buying palettes because that was like the one thing I really wanted to restrict myself on. So earlier in the year I only got the Charlotte Tilbury quad, the Natasha Denona My Dream palette, and the Lorac Noir palette. Everything else has been accumulated in the last three months which is kind of crazy but it's fine it's fine it's fine at least I wasn't doing 18 palettes consistently throughout the year you know what I mean so I feel like it balanced out quite well and like I said I got it all of these on a deal so I didn't pay for full price for any of these which is the most exciting part so let me know do you have any of these palettes do you want to see videos on any of these palettes let me know your thoughts I love knowing what palettes that like we have in common you know what I mean like I love hearing that you have the same palette that I have I don't know why that just makes my heart happy so <laughs> let me know I hope you guys will subscribe so you can see content using these palettes because like I mentioned I am on a no buy so I am really going to focus on what I do have and let me know what I should do with this Colourpop palette and these Pat McGrath palettes should I just pass them on try to sell them what's the tea let me know your thoughts and uh, as always thank you for watching don't forget to don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye